Hello, today we're going to talk about enthalpy of formation. Okay, so for the most part, enthalpy um, for us, delta H, is going to mean the same thing as Q, which is heat. Um, but enthalpy is a little bit more specific, and we're going to look at standard enthalpy today. So standard enthalpy we usually denote with a little degree symbol like that. So it's standard enthalpy. Uh, and it refers to this one mole, so like one mole of reaction um, or per mole of reaction. Um, but it's also indicating it's at uh, 1 atm pressure and 298 Kelvin. Now this is um, not the same as SCP when we're working with gases. Uh, 298 Kelvin is about 25 degrees Celsius, so it's room temperature, um, which is when we're typically doing most of these reactions. So when you see that standard sign, it means 1 mole, 1 atm, 298 Kelvin. We're also going to talk about, uh, a little bit more specifically, the delta H of formation. So standard enthalpy of formation. Enthalpy of formation is the uh, heat involved when you form one mole of a compound from its elements in their standard states. So let's look at a couple examples here. If I make water, okay, if I want to make one water because it's one mole of the element, uh, of the compound, all right? And you could have, um, let's just say we're making liquid water, okay? I want to make that from its constituent elements in their standard states. So I'm going to make it from hydrogen and oxygen. Now, hydrogen and oxygen are diatomic gases. So that means at standard conditions, oops, it's H2 and O2 gas. So those are the elements that make up the compound in their standard states. Now you do have to balance this. Now I have two hydrogens on either side. I cannot add a coefficient here because the point of heat of formation is you're making just one of the product. Um, so this is probably the one and only time, or like this, this type of um, balanced equation is the only time you really want to use fractions. So I need to use half of an oxygen to make the water molecule. Now, so the, the heat involved in doing this would be the heat of formation for liquid water. You could also have a very similar equation, standard states, but this time for gaseous water or steam. Um, so the equation looks very similar, but it's going to have different heats of formation because you have different uh, a different product being formed, a different state of a product being formed. Um, let's do one more example just to make sure we've got that heat of formation down. Um, let's see. Let's just do carbon dioxide gas. So the elements that make up um, carbon dioxide are carbon and oxygen. Oxygen is diatomic and it's a gas. Carbon, on the other hand, is a solid uh, under standard conditions. Um, now that is balanced already. But you need to make sure that you know kind of the standard states, the standard, um, whether it's diatomic or just monatomic, when it's in its standard state. And um, so th those are your formation reactions. And you're going to have values for the heat of formation for each of these. OK, so those heats of formation we were talking about become really useful because we can use the heats of formation of the individual um, compounds to find an overall heat for a reaction using those compounds. So um, let's say I have uh, just methane reacting to form carbon dioxide and water. Okay, um, I need two of these and two of these. So now that that's balanced, I can use the heats of formation of the carbon dioxide and the water that we were talking about before, and then the heat of formation for the methane and oxygen gas. And the equation that I'm going to use is the sum of the heat of formation of the products minus the sum of the heat of formation of the reactants, products minus reactants. Now this is different from bond enthalpies. We talked about bond enthalpies in the previous video. Bond enthalpies has to do with bonds breaking and forming. So when you're finding heat of reaction using bond enthalpies, we always want to use the term broken minus formed. 
But if you're using heats of formation, it's the opposite. Heats of formation is going to be products minus reactants. Um, but you will have a table of values typically, or they'll give you all but one, and you have to figure out the one missing one. Uh, but these are some different um, delta HFs um, for some different substances. And you'll see there's a bunch of zeros. Okay, So if you already have a substance in its standard state, so like chlorine gas, chlorine is atomic, uh, a mon <laughs> chlorine is a diatomic gas at room temperature. So if I want to form chlorine gas from its constituent element, which is chlorine, its standard state is chlorine gas. So nothing's changing there. So there's no change in heat. It's just zero. So they don't even have to give you those ones that are zero. Like oxygen gas here, you know that's zero because that's the standard state. Okay, so here's an example. A combustion of propane. Is it endothermic or exothermic and how much energy is absorbed or released? And we're going to assume standard conditions. So they would have to give you the heats of formation. Um, this isn't labeled, sorry. These are delta H standard F. This, so those are the heats of formation for those things. Oxygen is zero because it's in its standard state. Um, so you would want to do products minus reactants. Well, you would do the you do four times the value for gaseous water plus uh, three times the value for carbon dioxide. And so that's your products, and you get uh, negative 2147.7. And then you would do the reactants next. Um, we don't have anything for the oxygen, but we just have one propane. So one times the negative 103.85, um, so negative 103.85. And then you would do products minus reactants. And when you um, subtract that, you get uh, negative 2,043.85 kilojoules. And so therefore, it would be exothermic because of that negative. OK, so what is the reaction enthalpy for a decomposition of baking soda? And they give us the reaction, and it's balanced. They give us a bunch of heats of formation. So we need to add up the products. Um, so we have the sodium bicarb, the carbon dioxide, and the water. And if you add all of those products up, you get uh, negative 1766. And then the reactants, I need to multiply the baking soda by 2. Um, so I would get negative 2026 for the reactants. And then if you subtract products minus reactants, you get that the overall energy change for that is 260 kilojoules per mole of reaction. So that's the reaction enthalpy. Now we need to look at um, how much heat is involved if you have seven grams of baking soda. So the first thing, anytime you see grams, pretty much you wanna change that to moles. So I'm going to use the molar mass of baking soda. That's for the baking soda and the HCO3. And then um, you have two of the baking sodas for every one reaction. And then finally, we have um, 260 kilojoules for every um, mole of reaction. So moles cancel, reactions cancel. And so now we are, we'll be left with just kilojoules. So you can um, multiply and divide. You'll get that there are 10.8 kilojoules um, absorbed when um, 7 grams of baking soda is used. And we know it's absorbed. So that's a positive value, it's endothermic.